Welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live, everyone. Now, to many, Alison Felix is known as being the most decorated U.S. track and field athlete in history. But what may be unknown to some is her fight for maternal rights among athletes and beyond. Yahoo News' Marquise Francis recently had the chance to speak to her about what she's doing to help the next generation of mothers. And he joins me now. Marquise? That's right, Rochelle. When you think of equity, we sometimes associate more opportunities at work with saying yes. But in my interview with Allison Felix, I spoke to her about how she's empowering women to actually say no, specifically through a new program. Take a listen. It's this amazing opportunity for women to apply for grants, to be able to say no at work. Um, Purely commissioned this study where they really try to understand the cost of saying no. And this can be women saying no to like extra hours at work, covering someone else's shift, coming in on a day off, um, and just being able to say no, to be able to say yes to themselves, whether that's, you know, showing up for a child's recital or um, just spending time with a family or prioritizing their mental health. So I am so excited to be a part of this. Um, I've obviously had my own experience saying no at work. So it's uh, just uh, something that's really close to my heart and excited to be able to do this. Yeah. And and in your own experience, right? So in early 2019, you said no. Um, Nike was not fulfilling their end of the bargain. You were pregnant and they did not have things in place so that you could feel comfortable maintaining your lifestyle and getting the pay that you deserve. And so you said no. Eventually, Nike stepped up to the plate and uh, I believe you left at that point. But can you talk about what that experience was like? And I'm curious of how that shaped how you move forward, because I think for a lot of women who look at you, they say, wow, Allison Felix stepped up and she was able to use her voice. But not everyone feels as comfortable. So what was that experience like and why did you feel like it was important to say no in that moment? Yeah, it was a really difficult experience for me. You know, um, a time that really should have been celebrated in my life was really scary. And there were not maternal protections in contracts for female athletes at the time. And I felt like it was an opportunity to be able to really speak my truth and to talk about that and to really try to secure those protections for women to come. Um, It was obviously, you know, a, a hard fight and I did end up walking away, but those protections are now guaranteed. And Um, female athletes will be able to experience them. And so it was scary for me to be able to share my truth, being a really um, private person and a person who hasn't really, you know, spoke up and been bold in those ways. But I feel grateful to have found my voice. And uh, I agree with you. Sometimes it can be really difficult to um, speak out in a a really public way. But I think we can all, you know, start within our own circles and um, be able to speak up in, in smaller ways. And speaking of starting your own circles, you eventually started your own footwear company. I'm just curious, what made you make that move? And what have you learned kind of being on the opposite side of now you are in charge and you are now able to kind of put rules in place and just conduct your business in the way you want to? Yeah, um, I started Sage with my brother and it's a lifestyle brand for women. And um, it has really just It's been an incredible experience. You know, our first product is a a lifestyle sneaker and um, to be able to create something engineered and designed by women for women, something that I didn't see out there. And for me, it was also just a highlight of my own career to be able to go to the Olympics and compete in my own brand. And the bigger idea was really, you know, that we exist to see women and to know them and to that they know their value. Um, So being able to cross that line and look down at these shoes that were the true physical embodiment of everything that I had been through was just uh, such a special moment. And I want to go back just a little bit because you talked at the beginning of this conversation about the actual cost of saying no. So I'm curious, what were those findings actually look like? Because I think when you think of stepping up, these are things that don't necessarily have a, a monetary value, but what is the actual cost of women saying no? Yeah, I thought it was so interesting, this study that Pure Leap did. And it looks like saying no is just about um, over $1,400 for a woman. And um, the figure changes when we look at different um, groups of people, African-American, Hispanic, and that's really interesting to dive into that as well. And when we look at the number as a whole of women saying no and what that looks like over time, we look into um, numbers like $55 billion, and it's just shocking to see that. 
Um, we, you know, obviously, I think there's a lot of fear around that as well, just not even knowing what that number might be. I know for myself, when I was in that situation, I didn't know what the actual cost was going to be, but I knew it was going to be big and I knew that, you know, I would feel the effect of that. And um, I think that's why it's just so important that this is a, a great step to be able to say that, you know, we want to cover those costs and, um, and help on a daily basis to be able to start putting women in position to be able to say no. And in recent news, I know women's soccer now, um, I believe, has legislation that is supposed to pay them uh, equal to their male counterparts. And we want to see that across the board, even for the WNBA. They were so big with ensuring democracy uh, in this last election was kept up. And so what is um, other people stepping up look like? Because it's amazing to see women stepping up, but it's almost as if they're the marginalized group when it comes to pay equity and so many of these just horrendous, you know, the ways in which the systems are set up in America. So how does it look like for other people stepping up and standing in the place to ensure that equity is great across the board? Yeah, I think it was a, a huge win what happened in women's soccer, but it was a long fight, you know, and it's been happening for way too long. I think we definitely need allies in the space. We need people to amplify stories, to listen um, and to step up to, you know, really having true equality. And so I think that, you know, we have to celebrate our wins along the way, but we have to keep pushing forward to making sure that we are actually experiencing, you know, um, equality and, and seeing that financially uh, with visibility and just um, a long way to go in a lot of different aspects. And that was Allison Felix, the most decorated U.S. track and field athlete in history, um, advocating for women to say no. And I think her point goes a long way, not just during Women's History Month, but for the entire year. It was an excellent interview. Yahoo News' own Marquise Francis there with Allison Felix, American track and field athlete. Great to have you here with us this afternoon. And thanks for bringing us that interview as well. Appreciate it.